a tool, one of the warriors. One of the places you can go is the bar. That's where a lot of the warriors hang out. We'll talk about who knows what. Um, you can get anything that you want out of it. But today what I'm going to talk about are young warrior organizations and how to use them. Because when you get out, you're going to be dealing with a lot of new things. And that's what young warrior organizations are there to help you out with. They're there to help you basically gain the perspective and gain the knowledge and get yourself established. So, before I go on, I have to talk about our social media here on the Virginia State Farm side. We're on all these platforms, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, YouTube. You just have to use the letters BSBYLC. We put all our professional development material online, including a weekly video through our professional development series. On Facebook, we're at VA Young Lawyers, and our website is at VAYoungLawyers.org. Just to tell you a little bit about me, I graduated in 2002 from James Madison University, go Dukes. I have a BBA in International Business with minors in Econ and French. I came straight from Harrisonburg down here to Grundy, and I spent three years at the Appalachian School of Law without a Walmart, without a Mexican restaurant, without a Chinese restaurant. We had none of that here. We had, um, what do we have? We had, we had track scent, we had a couple of roadside diners, and we had the Huddle House, too. I live right across the street. It's a good time. So I had um, externships in Washington at the uh, Community-Oriented Policing Services Office. That was great. I had a little bit of time with a congressman from Maine and the Environmental Protection Agency for my second year, uh, for my second summer. So after I graduated, I passed the Virginia Bar. I waved into the D.C. Bar directly ten days later after I swore in and I turned my paperwork to D.C. Now I have the D.C. Bar. I spent about three and a half years as a contract attorney working between the various law firms in Washington, D.C. And after that, I got an opportunity with the Social Security Administration. So while I was doing all that stuff for work, I was trying to keep a profile on the side to keep me in touch with various people. So that, you know, if an opportunity did come along, I could go out there and take advantage of it. First of all, I was with the ASL Alumni Association, as Jamie so eloquently stated in her introduction, where I was president from 08 to 09, and we started the alumni chapters and the Alumni of the Year Award. So that was our big thing. As she also said, I did a lot with the American Bar Association starting in my time as a law student, and once I got out, I began with the Young Lawyers Division. As soon as applications opened for their leadership, about a couple months after I passed the bar, I first put in an application. So I started as a committee chair, doing public utility, communication, and transportation law. I was dealing with that committee for two years. And I was also a liaison to their big bar section. One of the nice things about it was I got to go to all their meetings. They were all around the country. So I ended up in weird places such as Laguna Beach, uh, Palm Beach, um, Aspen, the homestead, the Greenbrier, all these crazy places that I never got to uh, see before. So after that time, I was on the council for the Young Lawyers Division and the cabinet. So there's a chair, I'll talk more about that later. I essentially served as part of his cabinet for four years. His and her cabinet, they're both men and women I serve under. Currently I'm with the membership board, I explore membership issues within the and the Lawyers Division. And I do a lot with uh, CLE issues. Um, that's definitely an area that you want to know with CLE. And currently, I'm working with the section of administrative law. So while I was doing ABA stuff, uh, a guy by the name of Brian Sharville um, met me. He was going to be president here in Virginia. And he persuaded me to come on over and do stuff with the Young Lawyers Conference. So that's where I, I currently serve on their board, doing all their web and all their social media. So, if you follow all our social media and you see stuff, usually that's me doing that. So, you have me around to uh, help you with your professional development. 
I'll talk a little bit about how the bar is set up. The local bars are essentially a group of lawyers who practice in a locale. And it's all over the place. Some of your smallest bars may have 10 people who gather in a restaurant to some of your larger bars, like your city bars, some of your large county bars, where you have a formal structure, where you have sections, divisions. You have young lawyers, divisions. It's all over the place. One of the nice things about those local bars is you have contact with the lawyers and it's easy to, easy to connect with them. But on the other hand, there is a chance that they may not have all the professional development opportunities you want. You may want to get to know oil and gas law, for example. And the local bar may not have oil and gas lawyers for you to learn. So you may have to elevate yourself to a state bar. And it's going to require a little more travel if you're going to really do it right. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how the Virginia structure goes. I don't know any of the other states, but um, we have judicial circuits, 31 judicial circuits here in Buckingham County. We're in the 29th circuit, I believe. And so what happens is, for administrative purposes like disciplinary boards, they get um, they're all divided by particular circuits. So if you want to get involved to something local, the state bar is good, particularly with uh, council level uh, issues. And of course, the, a group of councils gets clustered together into a circuit, and uh, those circuit or districts start. And on the Young Lawyers Conference side, our Board of Governors is divided by the circuit. So, for example, I represent the 5th district, meaning I represent Fairfax and Prince William counties on that board. Now, if you go to the next district west of me, that goes from Loudoun County all the way down to Harrisonburg, Stanton, Charlottesville, and then back east to Fredericksburg. So these districts can be large. And of course, if you want to be involved with the State Bar, they have a disciplinary board. They have State Bar committees. We do have some alums who are involved in some of the State Bar committees. Uh, for example, Communications, CLE. They meet by teleconference, but they are intense committees. They definitely are meeting all the time, trying to figure out different issues. And of course, sections and conferences are more devoted to the needs of lawyers themselves, particularly individual areas of law. And of course, like the Young Lawyers Conference, they take care of specific young lawyers' issues. We have specialty bars also. Uh, if you are interested in like a particular area of law or a particular lifestyle of law, we do have ethnic bars for every type of ethnicity. We have the women's bar that attacks issues that uh, women confront. We have the LGBT bar. We also have bars divided by practice areas. For example, the American Association of Justice. We have defense lawyers, prosecutors, the energy bar. If you are more political in your involvement, well, we have political bars too. Federalist Society and the American Constitutional Society. And of course, practice setting also. The largest bar around, of course, is the American Bar Association. American Bar Association lobbies states, they lobby Congress, uh, they do state Supreme Courts too, they lobby all these organizational bodies, and uh, they, set, they set policy. And of course they have many different sections, divisions, and forms devoted to your particular needs. On the side where I work with the ABA and Lawyers Division, it mirrors that entire uh, greater ABA structure. We have assembly, which just sets all the national policy on behalf of the lawyers. Of course, the council and the cabinet, which do specific projects, and committees and boards, which help, um, help young lawyers get integrated into the practice. You're going to see uh, young lawyer groups all over the place. Um, you'll see them in all state bars, lots of local bars, too. Your membership requirements updates the Varies by the uh, young lawyer group. 35, 36, 37 is what I've seen. I've seen them up to 40. But even if you're above a certain age, you're still a young lawyer when you get out. First three years, five years of practice, you're going to be a part of the young lawyers group for that particular organization. And each young lawyers group's goal is to get you involved with the bar, to get you to be a part of the greater lawyer world. So. They're there to show you the benefits of the bar. You can create connections. And of course, 
There are many opportunities for you to develop practice and leadership skills. Usually, young lawyer groups divide their projects into three categories. Member services, which helps you out, particularly with CLEs, with brown bags, that sort of deal. Public service, this is where you do the pro bono, um, anything else you like that's uh, publicly served, public service, community service, essentially. And diversity in the bar, which is aimed to get you into the uh, greater profession in itself. Young lawyer groups have leadership, well, actually all lawyer groups, they love continuity, they love institutional knowledge. And so if you're going to go for a presidency of one of these groups, it's going to be a three or four year commitment. You're going to start off as either secretary or treasurer, where you're going to learn the organization in and out. Even if you've been involved in years, there's a whole lot of stuff you have to learn from the executive side. So that's what your, that year is for. President-elect, you're planning your year. President, you're having your year. And then immediate past president, you're there to consult whoever for the organization to kind of help them guide their initiatives to success. <coughs> so here's probably the most important slide I have right here. You want to have a strategy for getting involved. Uh, because, as you know, when you're new, you're going to get lost. And it can be overwhelming at times. Some of you are going to have jobs, some of you are not going to have jobs. That applies to everybody in video land, too. If you have a job, you want to get involved in the bar, you want to grow and sustain your skills. Essentially, there may be a skill that you feel that you don't, you're not developing enough, like a leadership skill or something like that. Here's the perfect place to do it. Of course, creating business, business development opportunities for your firm or for your organization. That's very important. And what I tend to see as most important as a public uh, sector employee, it allows me to see how people do things. Get outside my office, get outside my bubble, get outside Washington, D.C., and see what people are doing, see how people talk. <clears throat> to me, that's probably one of the biggest benefits I get out of the park. If you don't have a job, your strategy is going to be slightly different. You want to find leads. You want to keep up your skills, and there are plenty of opportunities you'll have, whether it be through newsletters, magazines, or through CLE, that you're going to be able to do something like that. And of course, developing the leadership and management skills and your soft skills that you need with uh, working with uh, groups. And in both situations, of course, I say this again, gain perspective on how people operate. So. There are lots of projects out there. What's right for you? Remember your, what you've done. Remember your community service that you've done while you're here. Your clubs here. If you do clubs outside of school. Your college activities. If there's something that you've read that's really interesting, I highly recommend you pursue a project similar to that. Of course, if you want to travel, there are plenty of groups that allow you to travel. Of course, uh, when I talk about membership fees, in your first year, you're going to get a free membership in all the voluntary bar organizations. They will want to recruit you. That includes the American Bar Association. That includes most of your state bar organizations or voluntary ones. Take advantage of that free membership. Just to let you know, you will have that. Look for that piece of paper in the mail that comes uh, after you pass the bar exam. And of course, I have my cards here for all of you. If you um, want to get involved, I can help you figure out what you'd like to do, of course. And of course, with your goals, don't forget to go for a, I know you'll like a local bar, go for that. Give that a try. And of course, to supplement your time with local folks, I definitely recommend doing something on a state or national level, just to help you out, just to get you some long distance leads in your practice. Now that you pass the bar, now that you're in, and you will all pass the bar, I guarantee you. You will all pass the bar, study, work hard, these people taking good care of you. Right? They've taken good care of you. So, here's what you do. Even though this person may be the chair or the president of an organization, they'll talk to you. And the, 
The exception to that might be the president of the ACB where they have 400,000 people. I'll, I'll say this, give them a try anyway. They might be interested to listen to you. They're, they're all about recruiting. They all want to hear who you are and what you are. So definitely go out. Another thing that's important, each bar has goals they want to meet. Are we serving our members? For instance, are we putting on continuing legal education? Are we putting out, we have a journal to put out, uh, we need articles for that. We have a public service project and apply that in the community. And local coordination and of course volunteers. So somewhere, somehow, there is going to be room for it. If somebody turns you away, go to another organization. There is room for you in this profession. And I'll just give you some names here as part of the presentation flies. In Virginia, we have two uh, organizations. We have the Virginia State Bar, the Mandatory Bar. We have a voluntary bar called the Virginia Bar Association. Both have young lawyers groups. Young lawyers conference is one affiliated with um, the Virginia State Bar side of the PBA has the young lawyers division. If you're going into West Virginia, they have a similar situation. The State Bar has the Young Lawyers section, and the Bar Association has the Young Lawyers Division. If you're going to Kentucky, they just have one bar, and they have a Young Lawyers Division. Same with North Carolina, and same with Tennessee. Now, I do know people on the executive boards of all five Young Lawyers Divisions. And in addition, of course, the American Bar Association's the uh, largest one, and of course I know all the people on that board too. If you want a personal introduction to anybody in the room, I will give you that personal introduction to whoever the chair is or whoever's on that board. They will definitely be happy to hear from you. Finally, we have our special interest bars. All these groups that I previously mentioned have state chapters. Many of them will have state chapters. If you're in a large city, you'll have state <coughs> chapters. Many of them will even have the career groups. So there's a chance for you to get involved. And I might be able to help you with some of them, but we'll see. Well, I'm not thank you for letting me come back to Grundy and see all the fine stuff you have. So. <laughs>